buenos dias. My name is Megan Blake and I'm a Spanish teacher in Northwestern Pennsylvania. Today I'm going to be showing you a few simple things that you can do if you're brand new to Canvas and struggling with distance learning. So here we go into the land of Canvas. Uh, it is an awesome online tool. It is a platform that enables you to build an online classroom, much like what you would use for online courses in colleges, and really enables you to make it as awesome or as simple as you want to. It's not quite as intuitive as Google Classroom, so that's what intimidates a lot of people. But once you're shown how to do some of these really basic steps, it does make it a lot more accessible, a lot more easy to use, and it, it is a good tool. So what we're going to do, this is your dashboard. So when you log into Canvas, your dashboard with what courses you are assigned is going to show up right here. Now I have a Spanish club that was actually an empty Spanish one because we have a mix of middle school and high schoolers in my Spanish one courses. I have my Spanish one, Spanish two, three, four, five. My study hall shows up because it's technically a class. And then my intro to Spanish. Now I'm going to be starting from scratch in my quarter four intro to Spanish course. All my other courses have a quite a bit of structure built into it. So it's a little bit hard to show you how to build things when they're already there. So we'll be starting in with my intro to Spanish. Now, what I'm gonna do first is I'm gonna click on these three dots because I don't need the rest of the course information after intro to Spanish. So if I click the three dots, it lets me choose my nickname for this course and I'm going to call it intro to Spanish and that's it. I'm gonna leave it red because red is actually the color I do apply to my intro courses. I color coordinate them. Um, and then from there, now it just says intro to Spanish. It is important to note that whatever you change it to on here is not necessarily going to change on your students' computers, but it makes it easier for you to identify the courses you need to. So I'm going to click on this course, and it is completely empty. So it prompts me to create a new module or add existing content. Now I could potentially import from my other courses. I could share things to the commons, which means that a course that is already over, things I created there, I can share to something called the commons, which enables you to share things you've created either with whoever wants to download it, only people in your district, only people at your school, or even only just yourself. So usually what our school encourages us to do is only share it to yourself because they don't want to run into any kind of issues with copyrights. And it does enable you to click if the material that you have uploaded is copyrighted. And it's a really great way to help protect that copyright by only allowing it to be seen by you and your students, the people who were intended to see it when you purchased the license. So we'll get to that at another point when we talk about videos in another video. So instead of creating a new module, what I prefer to do starting off with the course is to create a home page. So you can do that by coming here to the left hand side and clicking on pages. Now once I've done that, I can go ahead and come over here and click add page. And you'll see that there are no pages created yet. I'm going to title my page, home page, not home page. All right, home page. And then I'm going to design my page. So I'm going to say, Hola, bienvenidos a la clase de español. Alrighty. Hola, bienvenidos a la clase de español. And I'm going to go ahead and make that central. So just like on Microsoft Word, you can find the justification right here. I'm going to center it and I'm going to make it bigger. I can find the 12 point over here. I'm going to make it 36 point and I'm going to make it red. So I'm going to click on the font color. We're going red. So go hola, bienvenidos a la clase de español. Now, what I generally do with my intro classes is I tend to do TPRS in there, which makes it a little difficult being home, um, which stands for total proficiency through reading and storytelling. We do lots of uh, stories, we act them out in the class. Um, and we're gonna try to do some semblance of that with videos that I record and audio that I record and trying to keep responses interactive with them. But uh, we're gonna see how well that works. But I'm gonna go ahead and create 
my lessons. So I'll do Lexion Uno. I like to link the other pages that they're going to need to my homepage so that it's kind of, it's what the first thing that they're going to see when they log into Canvas and come to my page. So it makes it easy for it to be right there on the homepage where they have the links that they're going to need to get. So I'm going to just create through lesson five right now. And I'm going to, instead of making these red, I will take them back to black. Okay. So once I've created those, uh, you can make whatever you want to on here. I'm going to go ahead and save this. And the save and submit type buttons are over here. Now you've got two options for when you're going to be saving a page. You can just save it. That is only going to save the content that you've created. Your students will not yet be able to see it. They will not be able to see anything until you click save and publish. In fact, you have to publish the course in order for them to even see the course. Now, my course, I believe, is published. I'm going to click on the home page, and it is not yet published. So I can click publish here, and they want me to choose a home page. So I'm actually going to go back to pages and that page that I just created that I wanted to be the home page. I'm going to click on these three dots to the right of it and say, click use as front page. Now, when I click home, it should be the page I just created one moment. Oh, okay. Choose home page pages, front page. There we go. So two steps. So you had to, in pages, do the set as front page, and then over here on the right, you click choose home page when you're home, and you can choose the pages front page. Okay. So once you do that, anytime you click into this course now, this is what's gonna show up, okay? So I scroll down, click on intro. This is what I'm gonna see, and this is what my students are going to see anytime they log in to my class. Now, I have my homepage. I've gone ahead and written down my lessons here, but now I actually need to have some lessons. So I can do a couple things. I can either create pages and link activities into them, or I can just create activities and I can link them to the lesson and that's what the lesson will be. So for example, uh, my first lesson that I usually end up doing has to do with classroom commands. And what I will probably end up doing is creating a video and then having them do a short quiz afterwards about what they heard. So I would create an assignment. And actually, instead of doing a short, for a short quiz, I wouldn't do an assignment. I would go to quizzes. Okay. I'm going to create a quiz. I'm going to do from classic quizzes just to keep it simple. New quizzes are cool, but we're keeping it simple today. So I'm going to name my quiz Classroom Commands. I'll have them watch the video and take the quiz on classroom commands. Uh, it is, I have it listed currently as graded quiz. I'm going to instead make it an ungraded survey. If you want to shuffle the answers, you can. You can give a time limit if you want to. Keep submissions anonymous. Allow multiple attempts. I usually allow that. Um, and then let students see their quiz responses. Let students see correct answers. You can also limit when they can show the correct answers so that they have to do it for a certain time in order, um, and then they can see it later. Um, or hide the correct answers after a certain amount of time. Quiz restrictions, you can require an access code. And if you click that, it'll give you a code that you have to send out to them. You can assign it to everyone or only a certain amount of people. Give it a due date. So if I give it the due date of April 30th and make it available from now, until April 30th. You can make your due date whatever day as long as it's available 
um, until the due date. The due date cannot be past the availability date and it cannot be before the available from date. 